Hey everyone and welcome back to a bit more Rising Storm 2 Vietnam where I'm going to be taking a look at the weapons. Are there are going to be more comprehensive videos out there because I'm not one for all the ins and outs of the weapons. You know, I'm interested in the practicality of it. So all the weapons have a dangerous end and a less dangerous end. The dangerous end points towards the enemy, the less dangerous end stays in your shoulder unless you're battering somebody to death with it. This is part of the attitude that you kind of build up when you've been playing Red Orchestra and Rising Storm. The weapons themselves are just tools. What decides whether you're going to win the engagements you get into are things like the positioning, surprise, your situational awareness. All the weapons are so lethal and so accurate at the right ranges that it doesn't really matter too much what weapon you've got, you're going to be able to be very effective. There are a couple of little things though that I've seen some people gloss over, miss or misunderstand, so I'll give them a quick once over and then I'll leave you alone with the gameplay footage. If you're looking for a specific weapon, I've left some timestamps down in the description below so you can skip ahead and have a look at them. The biggest thing to remember though guys is that it's still a beta, some things are still very much up in the air, subject to change. Common sense stuff, you know, like if you have an assault rifle, full auto is still going to work at close range and single shots are still going to be best at long range, so you don't need to worry about anything like that. But the details of the weapon handling might be a bit different now than they are at release. Let's kick off with the traps and the explosives because they're something new. The Vietnamese have the punji trap, the toe popper mines and the tripwire. And these are all what you call victim activated traps, which is to say that you plonk it down somewhere where <laughs> the enemy can't see it and you wait for them to run into it and they'll set it off on their own. The Americans, on the other hand, have the Claymore and the C4 explosives, and these are both command activated. And that means that have you have to take the clacker out and clack it to set the explosives off. So all the people who are putting claymores down and then wondering why they never explode is because you have to tell it to. So they're useful in different ways. The Americans, it's a very specific kind of defensive, or if you're going to use the C4 as a kind of gigantic hand grenade, offensive way of doing it. With the Vietnamese, it's more about denying the enemy freedom of movement by occasionally maiming him. If these things worry you, then what you want to do is pick the point man class as the US or the scout class as the Vietnamese, because they can see traps and explosives. They're highlighted red for them and you can go up and disarm them. So that's the traps and the explosives. There are some other weapon features. You can switch between single or both barrels with the hunting shotgun. Plenty of weapons can fix bayonets for a bit of stabby stabby, though this does affect the weapon handling and they get quite difficult to use in close quarters because they're longer. The shotguns and the M79 have some loadouts with mixed ammunition types and you can switch between them. A couple of different types of buckshot. There's a rifled slug for the hunting shotgun couple of different shells for the M79 but remember what you've got up the spout because shooting somebody with an M79 smoke shell isn't tremendously good at putting them down. The machine guns both have bipods and you can fold the legs up so if you want to go into assault run and gun mode go Sturm firing you can fold the bipods up and you've got a bit more maneuverability with the bipod deployed obviously you've got a bipod you've got a very stable position if you can set it prone or in some cover. With the sniper rifles you can switch between looking through the scope and looking over or under it. There's a few weapons with foldable stocks. Fold the stock to get a nice handy close range maneuverable hip firing machine. Redeploy the stock and you get a bit of control back and you can look through the irons again. Grenades you can throw overarm or underarm. Watch out for the white phosphorus grenade because that creates a little bit of a smoke screen and burns people to death. The purple US smoke grenade that the squad leaders and the team leaders get, the one that seems to be mystifying a few people, this is actually marker smoke. So it's not for concealment. What it does is it puts down an arty mark that the team leader can Battalion, call in Battalion. nasty stuff on. That's one of the ways you can mark target for the napalm, the spooky and the artillery. Lastly, with the flamethrower, yes, it can shoot round corners. Yes, you can set yourself on fire with it. And no, the tank does not blow up Can't when you it. shoot it. That's about it for the weapon features, guys. I'll leave you alone with a bit of gameplay footage of all of them in action. I haven't done some of the shotgun loadouts, the shotgun variants, because they're all pretty similar, but apart from that, everything's in there. I even managed to force myself to use the sniper rifle, so hope you enjoy it, guys. I'll catch you in the next video.
attacked. Napalm. Boys, you show those sidehex what swapped. Barrage inbound, take cover. Attack. You're losing this fight. Capture an objective. Fire support inbound. Take cover.
target left 200, add 100 from point X-ray. Repeat, left 200, add 100 from point... <laughs> Whisper, scouts report the enemy. We have taken objective Charlie. We are taking objective Bravo. We have lost objective Charlie. Napalm inbound, watch the skies. Objective Foxtrot is being attacked.
ちら大体か Napalm sticks to kids. 